An active pattern over the next 10 days with multiple troughs likely to dig through the eastern U.S. bringing shots of cold air, the potential for snow and storms on the doorstep for many. Welcome in folks, great to see you on this Friday, April 11th. Always good to uh, be up early in the morning and talking about the weather and I'm glad that you joined me to do it uh, this morning. Again, a good bit to talk about. Hopefully you watched yesterday's video. I gave you the heads up on those hailstorms uh, that definitely ended up happening through Georgia, the Western Carolinas, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, even portions of Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana got in on some of those large hailstones. So if you got any hail, let me know in the comments uh, how big it was and where you're watching from. And even if you didn't get anything, uh, let me know what you're seeing out there this morning in your neck of the woods. Alrighty, folks, with that said, let's just go ahead and dive right into it because, again, a good bit to talk about in today's video. Now, you can see on satellite loop here, it's not hard to find where that active weather is in the eastern U.S., this big trough dipping down, and you can see that swirl along with it here at the surface. We've got a surface low pressure, we've got an upper level low pressure, we've got all sorts of low pressure and cold air in the eastern U.S. right now, and that's going to lead to a pretty interesting day of weather, I'd say, for really many of us here, especially east of the Appalachia chain, where we're going to see some hailstorms once once again, I think uh, some very interesting looking clouds. We'll talk about that as well. And then the potential for a pretty rare little April snow event into portions of the Northeast by the time we get into tomorrow. Now, before we start talking about that snow, let's go ahead and start with a severe weather threat today. Not a big one, but it is on the map. We've got that marginal risk, level one out of five for severe weather from Virginia Beach down to Raleigh, Fayetteville, Florence, the Grand Strand, up to Wilmington, Jacksonville, all of the Outer Banks, all the way down the South Carolina coastline, and even into South uh, or extreme south, uh, eastern Georgia here from kind of the Savannah area all the way down to Brunswick, St. Mary's, and then into portions of Florida from Jacksonville, Lake City, Gainesville, Ocala in on that threat today. Uh, and again, not a big threat. If we kind of break it down, we'll first look at the tornado threat. Uh, not very high today, but there is an area we're watching, especially eastern North Carolina. We've got that 2% threat. And it's kind of a weird setup. Whenever we talk about the sounding here in a minute, I'll show you. It's not going to look very tornadic, but today's an interesting day. And again, we'll break it down for you a little more in depth. But do you know if you're in that green area from Greenville, Goldsboro, New Bern, Jacksonville, Wilmington, uh, in and around those regions, could see a brief spin-up tornado today. The bigger threat, though, I think is probably going to be hail. Some of these storms could have hail within them. And um, I will add... Uh, even areas outside of the shaded in part on the map could see some hail, especially back towards Charlotte, Asheville, Greenville. Uh, interesting upper level support this afternoon for storms. Even if you're not in that threat area, I wouldn't completely discount the chance of maybe a couple large hailstones. Then we take a look at the wind threat, uh, basically the same as the hail threat today. All right, with that said, now let's go ahead and dive on into some model data. All right, so as you're waking up this morning and going out the door, you'll probably notice a couple of areas of some thunderstorm activity. We had a pretty nice line of storms work through the Carolinas overnight from the Western Carolinas all the way to the beaches by the overnight and early morning hours. Well, that same low pressure that brought those uh, storms yesterday and last night is going to do it again today. So you can see here it is parked over eastern North Carolina. That's where we have the highest tornado threat because we've got the most wind energy here and uh, maybe just enough instability to get a quick spin up tornado out this way. We'll talk about uh, the ingredients for that whenever we get to the hodograph. Uh, but notice what happens this afternoon. We've got that big shield of rain in eastern North Carolina up through southeastern Virginia. That kind of lifts northward throughout the day, but behind it, we get another expansion of thunderstorms to develop anywhere from east Tennessee, uh, potentially as far back as Nashville, all the way into Charlotte, Greenville, Spartanburg, Asheville, Blacksburg, uh, up into Boone, potentially into the triad and the triangle by the overnight. These storms could pack a brief punch with maybe a little bit of hail, even some grapple, which is kind of those dipping dots, uh, almost that it feels like fall from the sky. Uh, it would not surprise me today with today's upper level uh, presence. Now, uh, why is that so important? I keep using the word upper level, upper level low, upper level cold air, all these fancy terms. Basically, what's happening today is we've got already pretty cold air at the surface. You'll go out there in the Carolinas today and you'll say, it doesn't really feel like April. Uh, if you think it doesn't feel like April at the surface, go up just about a mile or so, and it's below freezing. So any storms that kind of grow through the atmosphere in that range, and I can guarantee you some of the storms will today, they're going to begin what we call the uh, wegner bergeron vendeusen process, basically fancy meteorological term. It's going to start creating raindrops, and in that process, you can get grapple and hail to form, and some of that may maintain itself if we get a big downburst all the way to the surface and we can get a pretty good little hailstorm. You folks uh, back in the upstate last night, you found that out the hard way in Anderson County. I had a pretty good little hailstorm. I think at least quarter size hail out of that one and all sorts of places over the southeast saw hail yesterday. 
could do it again today. So do not be surprised at that. And I'll also add some of the clouds are going to look very interesting today. Um, it's, it often happens when we have these cold core setups, as today's setup is referred to, uh, due to, well, you guessed it, all the cold air that we're working with. Uh, you can get some very interesting, kind of fun looking clouds. It's like they're thunderstorms, but it's cold outside. It's kind of what the sky looks like. Uh, I see it pretty often in the Northeast during snow squall season. Uh, it'll be kind of the same down into the Southeast today, uh, just not expecting really any snow out of it, more so uh, some thunderstorms. So you can see that works on through by the afternoon into the evening, continues. Uh, again, anyone in the Carolinas, Tennessee, North Alabama, Georgia, down into Florida could get in on that action. The tornado threat, though, like I mentioned, highest right now and into the early afternoon with this first little line of storms into the eastern Carolinas. So by the time you're watching this, may have already moved through, but don't rule out maybe even a very brief spin up could not be ruled out with some of these storms. But again, really, I think more of a hail threat than anything else this afternoon. When we go into the evening and the overnight, you'll notice we'll keep this ahead into time. All those showers and storms can begin to die off by late this overnight around the midnight hour. And we're clearing out and waking up and look at Saturday afternoon yeah, about as nice as it gets. Maybe a couple left over showers and sprinkles uh, into Virginia, the Carolinas would not be a big deal. It could be more of a nuisance though than anything else. All right, let's go ahead and dive on into the ingredients for this severe weather a little bit more. Now, this is the NAM model showing our updraft helicity today. So uh, where do we have updrafts and rotating updrafts? You'll notice not a lot on the map, but a couple areas try to jump out here into southeastern Virginia, eastern North Carolina, and then kind of along the U.S. 74 corridor from Charlotte back down towards uh, the Fayetteville and Wilmington area. Not a huge deal today. Again, not expecting a lot of um, severe weather, not a widespread outbreak, but some of these storms that get strong enough could begin to rotate, and that's where we could see some of the larger hail and maybe a brief isolated spin-up tornado. But again, I'll reiterate, I really think the hail and the wind will be the bigger threat today compared to tornadoes. The reason for that all comes back down to this photograph that I'm going to show you. Uh, and you know I love showing the fancy meteorological things, so we'll do it once more today. Uh, all right, so this is a photograph from the NAM model, the one I just showed you with the updraft helicities. Uh, from this afternoon. This is around Fayetteville or so, but I think this is going to be pretty similar for a lot of folks here in the Carolinas today. Uh, all right, let's start with the um, kinematics or the wind part of this. That's going to be the part on the right, this fancy squiggly line you see. Uh, we use this to kind of gauge what storms form, what kind of storms are they going to be. Are they going to be single cells, multi cells, super cells? Are they going to have a lot of rotation, a little rotation, no rotation? Uh, that's what we use this for. Uh, it looks a little squiggly here. We're going to have an S-shaped photograph, especially kind of in the low and mid-level. So that tells me we've definitely got some changing with wind direction and speed with height. Um, now, it's not a lot, though, especially at the surface. At the surface, winds are pretty unidirectional, meaning they're all kind of coming from uh, the southwest today. That's not very conducive for a tornado. You start getting a little bit higher, though, here, right around a kilometer up. You start getting a lot more curvature in this thing. So not a lot of directional winds here today. And you can see that with our SRH values down here. I'm going to box it in red. Storm relative velocity. Those are the 26, the 63, and the 49 number. Those are pretty low. You need really about 200 of, say, tornadoes are becoming pretty probable. So numbers that low, not going to cut it today. That's why the tornado threat isn't very high. However, the reason that it's not zero is we've got this meso low. That's a completely different storyline. But basically, it's just an area of spin at the surface uh, that is kind of different spin than this. It's vorticity. And sometimes in the Carolinas, things can get a little crazy. And when you start adding higher end Cape values like we have here today, about 1,000 and maybe even 2,000 by this afternoon back out uh, you know, into the Carolinas, especially kind of the areas east of I-77, uh, you start running a higher risk that maybe a couple storms could begin to rotate and produce a tornado. Uh, the other thing is our wind threat today. Let's see if I can find it on here. Uh, our D Cape downdraft Cape, about 600. That's not very high, but you could get a couple stronger wind bursts with that. And then the other big storyline is going to be our freezing level. I mean, you only have to go up to about 800 millibars and you're starting to get below freezing. Uh, that tells me, again, it, it can be pretty easy for hail production this afternoon. And a lot of the times, it's kind of more straight in general. Again, it's kind of S-shaped, but generally speaking, straight photographs uh, can be pretty productive for hail production. You can see that with our overall bulk shear of 64. Uh, we've got a ton of wind shear uh, in terms of speed this afternoon. So definitely could produce a couple strong storms. 
All right, so that is the potential severe weather threat. What about that snowfall potential that I'm sure a lot of you folks in the Northeast are wondering about? That's kind of an interesting setup. Again, same general idea, it's cold out there. <laughs> and obviously you need cold air to support any type of winter weather. And I think that's what we're gonna get. So this afternoon, just kind of a dreary, showery day through the Northeast. A couple snow showers could mix in here, uh, especially the earlier in the day that you are. So again, depends on when you're watching this. It might be a little too late for that, but uh, you can see a couple snow showers early this afternoon. Now, by the evening, that low pressure pulls up out of the south and starts working north. Now, a key to this forecast is going to be this blue line you see, the very first blue line. Let me actually draw it in blue so it kind of matches on the map a little bit more. Uh, right here, this is our 540 line. And this is, generally speaking, the rain-snow line. So anything kind of on the colder side would generally be snow, and on the warmer side would be rain. I think that's going to be a key. Now, um, it's going to be snow on the snowier side if the precipitation rates are heavy enough. You need heavy enough precip that actually pulls everything down to the surface uh, and doesn't just kind of slowly fall and have time to melt or even evaporate before getting down uh, to the surface. And you can see what happens overnight tonight and tomorrow morning, that begins to happen. We get heavy enough precip rates that uh, generally along and on the colder side of that 540 line, we've got some blue showing up. And uh, I'll mention kind of even some heavier blue. That's pretty good little, you know, heavy, wet snow soundings uh, in those regions there of the Hudson Valley of New York into Western Mass, portions of Connecticut, especially kind of the northwestern corner of Connecticut, northern Rhode Island. Boston could get in on snow, Scranton, maybe even as far south as extreme northern New Jersey here. And uh, this will also be slightly elevation dependent. So the higher up you are, the more likely you are to see some of this heavy, wet snow. But notice by tomorrow morning, I mean, you know, we're, we're puking snow, as they say, into portions of Massachusetts. Again, northwestern Connecticut there, the Hudson Valley of New York, uh, back into Scranton, into Boston, southern Vermont, New Hampshire. It'll be a nice little snow globe effect tomorrow morning. Now, as for accumulations, roadways should be fine. It's the grassy surfaces and some of those elevated surfaces that could finally pile up some of the snow, especially if your temperature is right at or below 32. If you're hovering at 33, 34 at the surface, it's going to be a lot less likely you get accumulation. But if you're at or just below freezing, this could definitely begin to stick on some of those grassier surfaces. That continues throughout the early morning. This is 8 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, again, a nice little snow event. And then throughout the day, it changes back over to rain for most of us. Uh, it tries to stay snow up into New Hampshire, Vermont, into Maine, especially kind of uh, portions of Maine closer to the Vermont border. You can see by even, this is uh, Sunday morning, still good little snow system going on in Vermont, New Hampshire, up through Maine. It kind of continues throughout the afternoon, but becomes mainly rain for most folks outside of the highest elevations. Um, so again, an interesting looking event here. And if we kind of take a look at the snow potential, uh, let's take a look at a couple models. This is the Kuchera outlook or the Kuchera snowfall forecast from different models. This is the European you see. Uh, basically, this kind of tries to take into account soil temperatures, ground temperatures, air temperatures, precip rates, and kind of gets a better uh, a forecast. And even this, whenever it's trying to, you know, eliminate some of the error, still shows a pretty good little snow event into the Hudson Valley, into Western Mass, uh, even gets snow as far south as northern New Jersey, gets a little snow event up into Vermont, uh, into New Hampshire especially. Uh, generally also elevation dependent. You can see some of the higher terrain here. Western Mass gets some of the higher totals, maybe near five inches, on le excuse me, at least on this model run. Uh, same thing for portions of the Catskills down here. Uh, lower elevations, more of an inch to a couple of inches. Not very often we see this this late in the season. Again, we're getting to the middle of April at this point. Uh, you know, it'd be one thing to see snow in the Adirondacks. It's another to be seeing it into portions of Connecticut and even potentially as far south as New Jersey. Uh, could be a bit of a rare setup. Now, is this going to be what happens? Probably not. I'll show you what I think is more realistic here in a second. But just to show you some of the agreement in the models, uh, that's the European. This is the Canadian. Again, still shows the event. Uh, GFS. GFS has been going uh, a little overboard with this one, I think. But you get the idea. They all show kind of the same general idea. Uh, this is the NAM model. This is what I showed you a second ago. Uh, you can see that same general idea. The high resolution rapid refresh model. Again, showing some of the same stuff. So we put all this together and we try to even take some more of the totals out of the models because again, it's April after all. And I think even with the Kuchera, they're probably overdoing it a little bit. Uh, this is kind of what we get. This is the forecast from the National Weather Service. I think this is a great forecast for this event. Higher terrains in the Western Mass, Southern Vermont, Southern New Hampshire could still crack three to five inches out of this event. That would not shock me. Uh, other areas nearby, the Catskills, same story. Uh, the lower elevations kind of in between that general region, probably going to be more of an inch or so. And I'll add, I think snow could fall anywhere as far south as, again, northern New Jersey, Scranton, maybe into Connecticut. Boston could get some flakes to fly. It's just less likely you're going to see accumulation in those areas. 
uh, due to the soil temperatures, the air temperatures being slightly above freezing, and uh, just the sun angle this time of the year. Even if it did stick, it would be gone by the afternoon probably in some of those areas. So uh, definitely a fun, exciting little event. Not a huge deal for travel, but definitely something I think that is worth talking about with this fun little April snow event. All right, let's keep pushing along here and talk about what's to come on down the road. Unfortunately, I think it's more of the same. Now, we will get some breaks of more spring-like weather, but this continual troughing in the eastern U.S. Uh, seems to be pretty persistent through at least the next week or two. You can see this is this week in that big pocket of blue over the east. Yeah, that's all that cold air and storminess that we just talked about. Now, we're going to get a little bit of a break. Here's by Monday. Uh, you can see some more ridging tries to build in. Warmer temperatures kind of take over uh, and kind of begin to advect northward. That definitely could bring a nicer start to the week for many of us in the east. But don't get too excited. Look what's up in the U.S.-Canadian border. Uh, we've got another storm system, another upper-level low swinging through. That's, again, going to bring a storm system and going to bring cooler temperatures for folks uh, by the middle of the week. You see that turns into a big trough through the eastern U.S. This has really turned colder in the forecast by next Tuesday, Wednesday, compared to how it looks maybe a couple days ago. And you can see that has a direct stream to the Arctic, so not an Arctic outbreak by any means, but it's going to get pretty chilly again uh, by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Then after that, another trough tips in by next weekend. So yeah, next week doesn't really look much better than it has been. Uh, if you're looking for warm spring-like weather, I know I've got viewers in Michigan and Pennsylvania and all wondering where's spring. Have to wait a little bit longer. Don't quite plan uh, anything yet. The good news, though, is I think by about 10 days from now, I know that's a long way, but uh, by the time we get to about April 20th or so, spring looks to try to return once again with warmer temperatures uh, returning to the forecast. Now, uh, what does all this mean at the surface? Well, again, we're going to get some storms to work on through. So here's Sunday into Monday. You can see a pretty stout low pressure works on through. I don't think it's going to be a huge deal for us in the U.S. Going to get a pretty good amount of snow into Canada. Uh, could produce maybe a little bit of severe weather Monday into Ohio. I'm watching that threat. I don't think it's a huge deal, but we'll watch it and see if maybe that trend's a little bit stronger or weaker uh, and obviously keep you up to date on that. Keeps on swinging through the eastern U.S. Again, a uh, pronounced little storm system there. Uh, behind it, cooler air funnels in by Wednesday into Thursday. And then another storm system we'll have to monitor and watch with another cutoff upper level low by next weekend works through the eastern U.S. That could bring rain and snow, maybe a little bit of severe weather as well, depending on uh, you know the exact track and intensity of it. And then hopefully by the time we get about 10 days from now, again, high pressure can build back in and maybe a little bit of spring-like weather would be the hope. Uh, the final thing we'll talk about are temperature anomalies. Just to back all this up for you, blue is below average, red is above average, or I guess orange more than red on this map. Um, we'll move it ahead this weekend. Yeah, it's cold in the east, warm out west. That's going to be the big theme. Uh, that hangs around. And then notice, this is by next Monday. Again, a little warm up Monday afternoon. I say a little. It's going to feel like a nice warm up, but it's not going to last a long time. As uh, we get to the middle of the week, and blue once again returns to the eastern U.S., east of the Mississippi, below average temperatures west of the Mississippi through the Rockies and the West Coast, above average temperatures as we get this uh, more negative NAO and AO kind of phase here uh, that brings this uh, just train of cooler air. Continues again by about 7 to 10 days from now, and then we hit 10 days out plus, and spring looks to once again return through the east. Alrighty, folks, that's all I got for you on this Friday. Again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notifications. And always, thank you to our channel members, which I think popped up earlier in the video. By the way, I forgot it in yesterday's video. I didn't forget about you folks. I think, um, uh, I don't know what happened in the editing process, but for some reason it got, it got taken out. But we'll be back in today's video. All right, y'all have a great one. Stay safe, and I'll see you all next time.